Washington. Thank you very much. Greetings from the Evergreen State. Over the next four days, we are going to explore the Olympic Peninsula, including the westernmost and northwesternmost points in the contiguous United States. Also, Port Angeles and Hurricane Ridge in Olympic National Park. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Here we are, Cape Disappointment State Park. Why would anybody be disappointed about this area is beyond me, but hey, that's the name of the place, right? One of these campsites here to the right will be mine. Let's go into town, stop by the Visitors Bureau and get some info about this area, which is the Long Beach Peninsula. And they have a nice sand sculpture here. In real time, this is when I went back to Oregon to visit Astoria, but you saw that on the previous episode, so yeah, I'm breaking up the timeline a little bit here. And now we're going to look for a vista point from where we can see the sunset. And this seems like a good candidate. Sunset is upon us. There we can see a small segment of Long Beach down there. Too bad it is so cloudy. I wonder if you're allowed to drive on the beach here. I guess you are. Let's see if we can get a better view from the North Head Lighthouse viewpoint. It is a short hike to the viewpoint through the rainforest. Hello there, little bunny rabbit. Rabbit! Well, as nature would have it, I don't think we're gonna have a, a nice sunset today, but it's still a fantastic view. And that's Long Beach. Oh, there. And it is long. Is that a bonfire? No, it is a car actually. Bunch of cars on the beach. Probably just people hanging out. Well, what do you think, huh? Beautiful view, and since we're not gonna get a proper sunset today, Sunset really won't happen for another five, ten minutes or so. I'm gonna start heading back because there's no one else here. Let me tell you, I get a little uneasy in the forest as it gets dark. Well, good morning. I depleted my battery pretty bad last night. A battery upgrade is imminent. <laughs> Well, yes, very nice campground, but at least this section right here is primitive, so no hookups whatsoever. And if I run the inverter for too long at night, mostly to run my computer, I usually deplete my 100 amp hour AGM after a couple of hours. And since I've already done it a couple of times, it is not holding the charge as it used to. Let's go down to Long Beach, see what it looks like from the ground. At 28 miles long, it is considered the world's longest drivable beach because of its tightly packed sand. At least that's what they say. Now, wouldn't that be cool to drive on the sand? There's no driving on the beach in the summer. And here are the rules for when you're allowed to drive on the beach. This here is the famous Long Beach Boardwalk, and I wonder how those people got on the sand last night. There must be another entrance. 
Here are some of the local points of interest. Check it out. It's a whale. There it is, the North Head Lighthouse, which we couldn't see last night. It got dark too early, or maybe I arrived too late. It is definitely a different type of beach from what I'm used to. Still, strangely compelling. Long Beach, for sure. Beach as far as the eye can see. What are these things? It's an interesting concept, I guess. To protect you from the winds and still have a picnic. Let's go back. I want to hike to the Cape Disappointment Lighthouse before continuing north. And here I am back at my site. And I don't know if I showed you, but we do have a small lake here. Right behind our site. Very pretty. All right, let's go for a little hike. Cape Disappointment Trail. All right, we are here, and we're gonna go here. Yeah, a little over half a mile, not bad. What's that? Oh, this little beach is right next to the campground. Apparently, Cape Disappointment earned its name when Captain John Mears failed to cross the river bar in 1788. A few years later, in 1805, none other than Lewis and Clark arrived here, near the end of their expedition. Well, here we've got the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. But it's not open yet. It opens in 45 minutes. So. There's the lighthouse, which in my opinion could use a fresh coat of paint, just my opinion. Other than that, this is beautiful here, at the mouth of the mighty Colombia. Welcome to the edge of the continent. Here's Fort Canby, established in 1863 during the Civil War and decommissioned after World War II. It is actually really cool to see, but it is not shown museum style or anything like that. No exhibits or reenactments. It is just here, what remains, as is, if you will. All this for nothing. Wait, the trail continues that way. And here we are at the lighthouse, first lit October 15, 1856. After a series of delays and one major shortcoming, it wasn't visible from the north, so eventually they had to build the North Head Lighthouse. Here's the mouth of the Columbia, Astoria on the other side. Is that Tillamook Rock in the distance? In any case, the show must go on. Let's start heading north. And the sun came out. 
This uh, Washington weather, man, I'm telling you, I'm not used to this. Not yet, anyways. And um, lesson learned from this trip, number one upgrade that I need to do on, the, on my rig here. We need more batteries. Take the next right toward Fort Canby, then turn left onto Fort Canby. Fort Canby, huh? Oh, this was cool. A primitive, no hookups whatsoever here at this uh, side of the campground, the first come, first served. I don't know if the other one has hookups, I'll find out. And um, now we continue north. Turn I don't left know. onto Fort Canby, then turn left onto Jetty Road. I don't know exactly where we're gonna go. There's this uh, campground uh, called South Beach that I think you camp Take right the on the beach. Take left onto Jetty Road. Now, I don't know if I have enough traction for that, so. Oh, there's a deer. You know, we do have deer back in South Florida, but they're kind of elusive. We don't get to see them much. This first part of the journey, we're driving around Willapa Bay, which is huge, by the way. And uh, this area of Washington, kind of unpopulated. Not many people here, not many roads. And I really have no plans to stop anywhere, except for lunch, maybe. Not until we reach the coastal area of the Olympic National Park. It is called Kaleilok, and they have a couple of campgrounds and a lodge. And I was thinking of staying in that area, but I don't really know yet. We are now in South Bend, the gateway to Willapa Bay. We might stop some other time, maybe rent a boat. Alright, I'm gonna stop for lunch here at this park in this town called Raymond. Okay, made me a, a grilled cheese sandwich. Came out great actually, with that Tillamook cheese. Very good. And now I, uh, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna stay at uh, South Beach. I called uh, two places up. Uh, I forgot the name of the town. I'll put it somewhere. And. Um, and yeah, bo both places said they, they had vacancies, so I'm heading out there now. It's right on the, on the north uh, coast. Yeah, I am now planning on staying at the very small community of Sikiu, on the north coast of the Olympic Peninsula, almost a stone throw away from Vancouver Island, on the other side of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Sikiu is relatively close to the two points of interest I want to visit tomorrow, Cape Alava and Cape Flattery. Here we are, Aberdeen the gateway to the Olympic Peninsula, also known as the birthplace of grunge, since Nirvana's Kurt Cobain was born here. Apparently, there's a bunch of stuff to do here, and I really like the murals, but we are on a mission. I find it really interesting to see the slightly different architectural styles as we move from state to state even different regions within the same state. And I like the fact that Washington state routes are marked with our first president's bust in silhouette. Now that's pretty cool. At the beginning I thought they were promoting some kind of historical marker and then it dawned on me. It couldn't have been a historical marker since Washington was never actually here, so yeah. This area, by the way, was originally named Territory of Columbia, but they thought it might be confused with the District of Columbia, so they decided to go with Washington instead, to honor the first president of the United States. I'm telling you, 
you learn something new every day. And while it is a beautiful drive through this green, lush forest, it is all the same, so it gets tedious after a while. At least now we're starting to see some mountains. I don't think I've seen this many trees ever in my life. <laughs> and we are back by the Pacific coast. Can't really see it, but it is there, trust me. Entering Olympic National Park. And there's that South Beach campground here to the left, but I'm just going to park, check out the beach and continue. Well, let's take a break, shall we? And see the beach. There seems to be a short trail that goes down to the beach. There it is, the Pacific. And it looks like someone forgot their clothes. It is called Klaloc Beach, very peculiar at least to me, with this old growth coastal forest, even though I apparently picked the least photogenic spot. <sighs> yeah, no amount of research is ever enough. That's that campground where I was thinking about staying at, South Beach, and it is very windy. I mean, look at the sand. Steamed mussels, anyone? Look at that old growth forest right next to the beach. For some reason, I was under the impression you could camp right here on the beach. Wrong beach, I guess. I'm still glad I came. It is certainly unique. Let's head back. Those trees are like really cool. One of the joys of travel is to, to see how things are different everywhere. And this beach is certainly different from any beach I've ever seen before. Just, just having these trees right there, right next to the ocean. But now, now I know where to come if I ever want to escape that Florida heat. This would definitely be one of those places. Actually, the whole West Coast. It really hasn't been hot anywhere near the Pacific. It is pretty much an interrupted forest the rest of the way, except for the city of Forks, Washington here, where I will return at some point. It seems to be the only large town somewhat close to where we're going, still about 40 minutes away. We've made it to the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Those mountains across the water, that's the great land of Canada. And uh, here we are, CQ. We've finally made it. You know, 30 bucks a night, I pay him cash. You know, it's uh, take whatever site I want. The place is wide open, so. 30 bucks full hookups, that's not bad, I mean, there's barely any any why, any cell phone coverage, but you can't have everything, right? I'm gonna drive around a little bit, because according to my coverage app, we're supposed to have some coverage, at least along the coast. And after doing some research, it turns out we're getting a very faint signal from Canada. And I know what you're gonna say, stop worrying about the internet, enjoy nature. And yes, that's exactly what I intend to do, but you know, I wanted to go home, tell them where I am, and to be honest, 
do some travel planning, get some work done. It kind of feels like we're back in 1990. That's an old pump right there. No cell phone coverage. Yeah. But wait, I am not nearly as cranky as I look. I am actually enjoying the strangeness of the situation. Right onto Washington 112 West. Thank you. I hadn't used one of those like old style um, gas pumps in a long time. You know the ones that you know you you give them 40 bucks, and uh, then when it's reaching 40 bucks, it just slows down. Yeah, it is kind of fun to reminisce on that era before we had pay at the pump and all these modern niceties. Luckily, I downloaded offline maps, so at least the GPS still works. Needless to say, I couldn't find any way to communicate with the outside world, let's put it that way, so we continue here in the Twilight Zone. Let's stop right here real quick. The town mascot, it's a fish dressed in a skirt. And uh, from this hill, I was finally able to get a message out using that faint Canadian signal. Right, let's make some, let's make some breakfast. I'm gonna do two strips of bacon and some eggs and, you know, call it a breakfast because um, I'm gonna go into Forks. It's about 40 minutes south of here. Supposedly there's internet there. I'm gonna upload the podcast. And then I'm gonna do the hike to to the westernmost point of the United States. Okay, let me show you. I use this app called Coverage. And it shows you, uh, and in the free version, you can only choose like one carrier, in my case, AT&T. And as you can see, you know, there's some coverage here just along the coast. And as, as, if, if you go over to Port Angeles, yeah, we're, we're good. But I thought this would be enough here where we are, you see, but it's just off the coast. And I do believe that is a signal coming from Canada, from Vancouver, from Vancouver Island, you know, across, you know, that's Canada over there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to, maybe I'll get a signal in Beaver, but most likely I'm going to have to go down near Forks uh, to be able to, to upload something. Yeah, the, the whole, the, the, the whole uh, peninsula, it's, uh, it's off grid. And the whole Olympic National Park is off, off grid too, so... By the way, it rained last night, but it seems that the rain has subsided. But I have, to, I have no way to, of checking the weather because I have no internet. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the small town where I'm staying at. Very picturesque. And yesterday you could see Vancouver Island across the water here, but not today. I've decided not to go to Forks right now, after all. I was able to communicate, sort of, kind of. So now we're going to one of the most remote areas in the Olympic Peninsula. It is called Ozette. And from there, we're going to do the 3.1 mile trail to Cape Alava. That's 3.1 one way, by the way. Part of the Ozette Triangle, a loop trail which is 9.2 miles in total. Hmm, Ozette info, let's check it out. No, no information back there whatsoever about the trail that I want to take. Uh, I read somewhere it's four miles, but I don't recall if it is four miles round trip or four miles one way. Four miles one way, it's uh, especially if it's up and down, it's, it's going to be quite a hike, but I think I'm prepared. Oh, I forgot bug spray. That's the only thing I didn't bring. Here we are, Lake Ozet Ranger Station. It seems to be a popular trail. Here we are. This is the welcoming committee here. Hello there. So here 
it is, the Cape Alaba Trail, 3.5, 3.1 miles. Let's begin our hike. And that's Ozet Lake over there. How many shades of gray? Here's the actual trailhead. We're only gonna do the Cape Alava portion, as I said. It's kind of like a boardwalk, but not an elevated boardwalk. It's just some steps here on the, on the ground. Oh, there's the boardwalk. Now it begins. It's supposed to be slippery when wet, and it is wet, so I'll be careful. walk in the woods and uh, I've done so far half a mile out of the 3.1 and if it, if it is all flat like this it shouldn't be too difficult we're back on the boardwalk it is a very flat trail for the most part except for these sections with stairs and we're pretty much at sea level, so even though it is kind of long, it is fairly easy. I'll be honest, I kind of feel out of my element here in the forest. A little bit out of my comfort zone. It's still a great experience to be able to see all this, you know, it's... Uh, the moss on the, on the trees, all the, it's very lush vegetation for sure. The blue dot, that's where I am. Going down towards the ocean. Check it out. It's the ocean. Here we are, the westernmost point in the contiguous United States. We've made it. Almost. Some some people camping here, so I guess that's a thing. And they say that at this point it is better to walk on the beach, so that's what I'm going to do. There's another campsite here. the sea lions who are those bald eagles perched on top of that rock you guys are hungry huh So pretty. Such a surreal place with the stack rocks offshore. I wonder what this abandoned building here is. There's supposed to be a, a Native American village nearby, but I don't wanna I don't really wanna go any further. I guess this used to be a ranger station here. Look at that. Can you hear them? I think those must be uh, sea lions out there. Probably, probably on that small island over there. Well, we've made it here, at Cape Alava or Alava. Uh, I don't know exactly how it is pronounced. But um, in any case, I don't have Google here to ask. In any case, this is the, the westernmost point in the contiguous United States. 
And as you recall, a couple of weeks ago, I'm starting to lose track of time here, but a couple of weeks ago, we were at the southwesternmost point uh, at the Mexican border over there. Now we are at the westernmost point. And coming up next, we're going to the northwesternmost point, which is actually not too far away. It's just a couple of miles that way. In any case, I'm very glad I made it here. And uh, it's another one of those uh, extreme points, landmarks, uh, accomplishments. It's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, accomplishments, let's call them, of this uh, uh, trip. Very happy I finally made it here. They are loud. They have to be on that island over there. certainly enhances the otherworldly feel of Cape Alava here. This feels longer on the way back, so you know, don't mind me. Excuse me. We just won't move out of the way. And we're back at the trailhead. We made it. It is already afternoon and I'm getting hungry. But first, before anything else, let's go to Cape Flattery. Oh yeah, sure, why not? The trail is supposed to take 25 minutes. They don't really say whether it's one way or round trip. It's actually a little bit colder than I thought it would be. Or maybe it is because I'm hungry. There are a couple of vista points along the way, but let's go to the end first. Oh, look at that. This is not it, but it sure looks impressive. The end of the trail. There's the Cape Flattery Lighthouse, located on Tatouche Island, about a half a mile offshore. It is very impressive. Well, this is truly the culmination of our coast-to-coast okay. -coast road trip. Here, Cape Flattery, Washington, the northwesternmost point of the United States. And it's actually the furthest uh, we can travel from my home base of Miami, Florida, without actually leaving the United States, is uh, the furthest. It's the, no, no, the northwestern tip. And um, uh, from now on, uh, on the trip, we are actually driving back to the east. It's really quite a sight out here. 
yeah, at this moment, at this very moment, I began the return trip back to Miami. It's the end of the land. All right, let's head back. Before I forget, let's add that Washington sticker to my map. I think we've earned it. By the way, I went to Forks, did my customary Friday livestream, uploaded the podcast, and not a whole lot more. Didn't get to explore CQ here all that much. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to do unless you have a boat. But I did what I came to do, Cape Alava and Cape Flattery. Now tomorrow, we're going to Port Angeles. Well, good morning. It is breakfast time and today we're going east towards Port Angeles. Probably not all the way to Port Angeles because I don't have a reservation at Port Angeles. It's Saturday so everything is pretty much booked. I have no idea where I'm going to sleep tonight but I'm sure we'll find something. All right, let's make some bacon. Maybe spinach. It actually expired yesterday. I think some of it is still salvageable. I'm gonna saute some onions. Got some mushrooms. We're gonna do some scrambled eggs. Uh, a little bit of that expired spinach. And a little bit of water. By the way, I've been eating the bacon while this cooks. Here we go. Bon appétit. Let's check out this campground here called the Liar River. A famous RVing YouTuber from this area has often called it one of his favorites. If I can find a good site, we're staying here tonight. Although it is a Saturday in August, so chances are probably slim. 
and I always seem to get myself into these situations in which I run into a dead end and I have to improvise. It looks like there's another loop here to the right, but I don't want to run into another dead end, so we'll continue. Yeah, I decided to not to do Liar River right now, not today. It looks nice, but it looks like it's packed, and I see all those signs that say a uh, Discover Pass required, but the guy at, at Cape Disappointment, you know, the ranger, told me that the Discover Pass is only for day use, so I'm confused. Here we are in Port Angeles, and I just had a great idea. Let's get Minitini some new tires. One of these days, I'm gonna fix uh, that rear axle in Minitini. But for now, I found my size tires here at Le Schwab, which it's great because I don't, I have a kind of a unusually small uh, tires on that trailer. But you know what? I don't really need to replace them yet, but it's just peace of mind. Uh, just having uh, new tires for, for the cross-country road trip coming up ahead. Coming up ahead. So, um, it gives me a chance to explore um, Port Angeles. First, let's go to the Olympic National Park Visitor Center, get some information. It turns out there's one right here in town. They have a race relief map of the area and they have information about the history and the fauna. Very nice, as national park installations usually are. Well, I grabbed my map and uh, it depends how long it takes it for, for the tires on the on Minitini. I might actually go tomorrow. It turns out my best bet is probably going to be Hurricane Ridge. I'll go tomorrow, but now let's have lunch. Well, this, this tire thing might have been a blessing in disguise because I was able to come to downtown uh, Port Angeles. And of course, it always pays uh, to pass by the visitor center and ask. And you know, I got some information about the ferry, you know, just show up. I mean, they, she, she said that uh, if you're just, you know, a passenger, not, taking a vehicle you don't really need to make a reservation so what's all this about a ferry you might wonder well spoiler alert the plan is to make a day trip to neighboring Victoria Canada the day after tomorrow and I guess this is where you would uh, board the ferry very nice uh, waterfront and now we're gonna pull the Miami and, uh, and jaywalk oh they had me at craft beer it is called Bar Hop Brewing and Artisan Pizza. I'm gonna have an Edis Hook IPA and a margarita. So let's go back, get the car, get the trailer, and let's see what we do. By the way, I've decided to stay at Walmart since it is Saturday and all the campgrounds are full. All hitched up. Well, Minitini got new shoes here. In the back, yep, brand new tires. So this is where we're spending the night. By the way, it seems to be a very RV friendly um, Walmart here in Port Angeles. There's a cool looking schoolie here at the Walmart. Uh, we've got a twilight moon. Good night. Well, good morning from the Walmart Supercenter in Port Angeles, Washington. And, um, well, I spent most of the morning here getting some work done, finishing next Sunday's video, beginning the following Sunday's video, and, and taking advantage that I have good internet here, you know, doing social media and all that stuff. Very uh, RV friendly Walmart here, please don't take advantage of it. And uh, let's hope um, it stays that way. But anyways, here we are at the Walmart and first order of business today. I am going to the post office to mail some, uh, I have a bunch of, you know, 
I have a backlog of, of lot of stickers and CDs that I have to mail. And then I'm uh, making time. The, the checking at the KOA is not until 1 p.m. I am kind of hoping to arrive early and see if if I can get an early checking. We'll see. I tried to get a haircut here at the Walmart, but they, they were fully booked for the morning. So we all know a haircut. So there, there's another barber shop in town, maybe with a big parking lot. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to. Because as soon as I drop the trailer at the KOA, we are going to the mountains to Olympic National Park. Here we are at the KOA in Port Angeles, and um, only water and electric available. But you know, it's it's a, it's a busy KOA here in the summer, and uh, you all know I love the mountains, so this is perfect. Now let's go to the mountains. Made me a sandwich. It's delicious. Sorry I didn't show you guys. I'll show you the next sandwich. Well, to the mountains we go. All over Washington, they have these drive through kiosks where you can get your espresso fix. And I'm about to get mine. I've seen these this kiosks all over the place in the Pacific Northwest. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Keep the change. Thank you. Alright, that didn't take long. I guess the, the people in front of me were asking for something complicated. Oh, I forgot to ask for sugar. Well, I don't need any sugar anyway. That's a good espresso. There's a long line to go into the national park. I wish there was a way they would streamline this process, but I guess they can't. Best investment ever. It's America the Beautiful annual pass for the national parks, and you're getting uh, for free and all the national parks and national monuments. And uh, usually if it has national in the title, this will, will get you something. For example, uh, this one is $30 per vehicle just to go into the park for, I mean, it's valid for seven days. This is $80, and it's valid for every national park for a whole year. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you. Did you want apps to... uh, Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another thing about the annual pass, it really speeds things up. Let's check out the view. Well, this is very nice, and it will get better the higher we get. I believe that's Dungeness Bay down there. There it is, Hurricane Ridge. Let's stop taking the view. Oh, there's the visitor center. It occurs to me, parking might be an issue. At the very least, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. And I just realized I am wearing a t-shirt from probably the southernmost <laughs> national park in the contiguous United States, Dry Tortugas. And I'm visiting probably the northernmost national park in the contiguous United States, which is Olympic National Park. I did not plan this. <laughs> There's the visitor center. Let's go see if they have a trail map. Well, this is the view from the Hurricane Ridge Visitor Center here. 
the Olympic mountains beside me. And uh, it's quite a sight. I, I wish you were here to see it because in the, on, in, on camera you can never see the depth. And it's, it's, really, it's really quite a sight, uh, this, uh, this mountain range, the Olympic mountains. And let me show you something because technically they are not that high. You know, they are five, six thousand feet above sea level and they still have snow. I guess uh, some of them are glaciers, I guess, and since we are so far north. the Cirque Rim Trail here and it has an overlook oh, an overlook, let's look at it okay, now your butt and, um, and then I might do a little bit of the High Ridge Trail These deer really have no fear Oh, look at that It is so beautiful up here. This may well be the highlight of my whole time here in Washington so far. You know how much I love mountains. If you squint hard enough, and I'll zoom in of course, across that body of water, you can see very faintly Victoria in British Columbia. very nice trail and we definitely couldn't have asked uh, for better weather I mean look at this there's deer roaming around all over the place and uh, tourists roaming around all over the place I'm one of them and all these trees you know this like Christmas trees it's definitely not in Florida anymore That is where we're going, huh? Hmm, is that a ski lift? Oh, yeah, I might as well do it. By the way, as you may have noticed, extremely well-marked trails, and they have maps at every fork on the road. Kudos to the National Park Service. This high ridge trail going through Sunrise Point, a little more strenuous, but the reward is these amazing views. As I always say, it's always a good idea to look back once in a while because sometimes the best views are back there, as you can see. I guess this is it. There's Victoria once again. We'll be going there tomorrow. They say on a clear day you can see the Cascade Mountains, but I think those are just clouds. Well, what can I say? Some people like the ocean, some people like lakes, rivers, any body of water. I like the mountains. This stuff always brings a smile to my face. The mountains and the desert, as I've said. Maybe because I've lived all my life in Florida and we don't really have any mountains, only landfills that look like mountains. My 
Okay, so far, this little portion, I mean, the, the National Park is huge. This little portion of Olympic National Park does not disappoint. And um, I was, I had relatively high expectations because it is a national park. But on the same token, I had no expectations because this is not one of those places that I've seen a million pictures of. It's, uh, it's one of those that is kind of under the radar. It's amazing. You think that might be Glacier Peak in the Cascades or just a cloud? I mean, according to this photo, it should be there. Oh yeah, these guys are here hanging out, you know. Not afraid at all, like it's no one's business. Let me tell you something, quite pleasantly surprised with uh, this place. Uh, atmospheric pressure. Yeah. Let's go to Squim for dinner. Mm, maybe. It is only about 15 minutes away. Google doesn't know where this place is. It's, uh, it's called the John Wayne Marina. This marina was actually John Wayne's dream, and after his death, the family donated the land so it could be constructed. It is such a beautiful afternoon. This is a, a beautiful marina here and the magic hour certainly helps. Let's see if this place looks inviting. If it does, we're gonna go inside and get something to eat. Oh, Pelican Room. Tell you what, I'm gonna go someplace else, and uh, that's what sucks about solo travel. Sometimes it is just not the right vibe. And don't get me wrong, the dockside grill looked perfectly fine. Too fine, perhaps. It was more of an upscale, romantic kind of place. This, by the way, downtown Squim. And I figured I'd pass by, check it out, Maybe find a restaurant. Actually, let's go back to Port Angeles one more time. I wonder if they allow RV parking here in Port Angeles because there's a trailer there. There's a Travado here. Perhaps it's just me, I don't think I'm in the mood today. In any case, I should go to sleep early because tomorrow the plan is to catch the ferry towards Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And we're gonna make it a day trip, so. We've been enjoying nature for quite a few days now and as much as I love nature, this city boy is in the mood for some city life and on the next episode that's exactly what we're going to do visit a city one that may even have a little bit of a european flair if you will and then Ili is flying to seattle in three days so that will be lots of fun until the next one thank you so much for watching and see you on the road